بسم اللہ وسلاۃ وسلام علیہ رسول اللہ وبعد سو وی ریچ دا لیسن فی اداب سیامی المستحبہ وچ از دا ریکمینڈیڈ ایٹیکٹس آف فاسٹنگ سو دا از دی وی ریچ دی الیونتھ سیٹنگ الحمد للہ سو ول گو تھرو دس چیپٹر کلنگ ہوم فروم وی برد وسیم لیفٹ آف یسٹرڈے الحمد للہ مبلغ راجی فوق معمولی و مؤت سائلی زیادت على مسعودی احمد ہوں علا نیل الہدا و حصولی و اقر بی وحدانیت و اقر بی وحدانیت ہی اقرار عارف بالدلیل و اصولی و اصلی و اسلم على نبینا محمد محمد عبده ورسوله وعلى صاحبه أبي بكر الملازم له في ترحاله وحلوله وعلى عمر حام الإسلام بعزم لا يخاف من فلوله وعلى أثمان الصابر على البلاء حين نزوله وعلى علي بن أبي طالب الذي أرهب العداء بشجاعته قبل نصوله وعلى جميع عليه وصحبه الذين حازوا قصب السبق في فروع الدين وأصوله ما ترددت, ما تردد النسيم بين جنوبه وشماله وغربه وقبوله So then the Sheikh begins with an introduction as he normally does and the rough translation of that is uh, all praise is due to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who allows the hopeful person to reach beyond his goal or to reach his goals and what he's striving for and gives the one who asks more than what he asks for. So wherever he asks for, Allah gives more from his bounty. I praise him for granting me success to obtain or to, uh, to obtain his guidance. And I testify to his oneness with a testimony that is based on proofs. I send peace and salutations upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his slave and his messenger, and upon his companion Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, his consistent companionship in all his journeys that he stuck to the Prophet always and stuck to him and clinged on to him. And while in as a resident upon Umar, رضی اللہ عنہ the defender of Islam with an unvanquished determination and upon Uthman رضی اللہ عنہ the forbear of calamity as it befell upon as it befell or as it befalls and upon Ali رضی اللہ عنہ Ali the son of Abu Talib the one who terrified the enemies with his courage before defeating them and upon all the Prophet's family members, his companions, and those who scored a great success of knowledge in the branches and principles of this religion, and their precedence in this subject matter will continue as long as the breeze continues to blow from all angles. So then uh, the Shaykh uh, continues, and he says, he says, um, Ikhwani, Ikhwani, هذا المجلس في بيان القسم الثاني من آداب الصوم وهي الآداب المستحبة فمنها So he says, oh my brothers in Islam, oh my brothers, this is the, um, this is the second sitting with regards to the, the types of fasting. And, and this, is, uh, this sitting is going to clarify uh, the second type of Um, of etiquettes from the etiquettes of fasting which is to do with the recommended etiquettes of fasting and he says and from these uh, types and categories and he says they are and uh, he continues so let's let's read on so he says as-suhuru wa huwa al-aklu fi akhir al-layli summiya bithalika li annahu yaqa'u fi al-sahari faqad amar al-nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Um, به فقال تسحروا فإن في فإن في السحور بركة متفق عليه وفي صحيح مسلم 
عن عمر بن العاص رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال فصل ما بين صيامنا وصيام أهل الكتاب أكلة السهر وأثنى صلى الله عليه وسلم على سحور التمر فقال نعم سحور المؤمن التمر رواه أبو داود وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم السهور كله بركة فلا, فلا تدعوه ولو أن يجرع أحدكم جرعة من ماء جرعة من من ماء فإن الله وملائكته يصلون على المستحرين أو المتسحرين رواه أحمد وقال المنذر إسناد قوي إسناد قوي So then uh, the sheikh he says So from the recommended etiquettes of fasting is the sahur, the pre-dawn meal eating at the last hours of the night before the rising of dawn or until dawn breaks and it's called sahur as we all know because the time in which uh, the meal is eaten is called sahar. That's a time period, the uh, pre-dawn time period. Um, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he commanded us with it in his statement, which we read from the uh, few hadith, uh, ahadith that we just read. So he said, from one of them, the first one, he said, eat the sahur, eat the pre-dawn meal, for verily in it there are blessings. That's collected by Al-Bukhari al-Muslim, as a brother Wasim explained before, Mutafaqun alayhi means has been collected in the in both Sahihs. And then the Shaykh mentioned another hadith from Sahih Muslim, and it, it was narrated by Amr ibn Las, radiallahu anhu, where he said that the Prophet sallam, said, the difference between our fasting and the fasting of the people of the book is eating of the sahur or eating the pre-dawn meal collected by Muslim. And the people of the book here are the Christians and the Jews. Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ has praised the eating of dates for sahur as well. So there's a particular mention with regards to eating dates uh, uh, during a pre-dawn meal. Uh, and he said in that hadith, he said, the Prophet ﷺ, the best sahur or pre-dawn meal of the believer are dates. And uh, Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, declared it to be authentic in, in, a, in a book he authored, Sahih Abu Dawood. Sahih Abi Dawood. And then the Shaykh in the final um, um, final hadith that was mentioned, then the Shaykh um, uh, um, mentioned this hadith and the rough translation of it, um, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, observing the suhoor or the pre-dawn meal, there lies a blessing in all of it. Therefore, do not leave it even if one of you is to take a gulp of water Verily, Allah and His angels send salutations to those who eat the sahur or the pre-dawn meal. And that was collected by Ahmad and Al-Mundiri. Uh, Al-Mundiri, rahmahullah, uh, said its chains of narration are strong. And it was graded Hassan by Sheikh Al-Albani as well in his book authored called authored by him called uh, Sahih Al-Jami. So let's continue reading. So then the Sheikh says, وَيَنْبَغِي لِلْمُتَسَحِّرِ أَنْ يَنْوِيَ بِسُحُورِهِ امْتِثَالَ أَمْرِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَالْإِقْتِدَاءَ بِفِعْلِهِ لِيَكُونَ, سحور ليكون سُحُورُهُ عِبَادَةً وَأَنْ يَنْوِيَ بِهِ التَّقَوِّيَ عَلَى الصِّيَامِ لِيَكُونَ لَهُ بِهِ أَجْرٌ وسنة تأخير السحور ما لم يخشى طلوع الفجر لأنه فعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فعن قتادة عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه أن النبي أن النبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وزيد بن ثابت تسحر فلما فرغ من سحوره ما قام النبي الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى الصلاة فصلى قلنا لأنس كم كان بين فراغهما من سحورهما ودخولهما في الصلاة قال قدر ما يقرأ الرجل خمسين آية رواه البخاري وعن عائشة رضي الله عنها أن بلالا كان يؤذن بليل فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كلوا واشربوا حتى يؤذن ابن أم مكتوم ف 
فإنه لا لا يؤذن حتى يتل يتل يطلع أو يطلع الفجر رواه البخاري وتأخير السحور رفق بالسائم وأسلم من النوم عن صلاة الفجر ولصائم أن يأكل ويش ويش ويشرب ولو بعد السهور ونية الصيام حتى يت حتى يتيقن طلوع الفجر لقوله تعالى وكلوا واشربوا حتى يتبين لكم الخيط الأبيض من ال الخيط الأبيض من الخيط الأسود من الفجر ويحكم بطلوع الفجر إما بشا بمشاهدته في الأفق أو بخبر موثوق به بآذان أو غيره فإذا طلع الفجر أمسك وينوي بقلبه ولا يتلفظ بالنية لأن التلفظ بها لأن التلفظ بها بدعة Let's just stop there for a second because that's a long paragraph Let's we'll stop there for a second so then the shaykh continues and he says, Likewise, the one who eats the sahur must intend to implement the Prophet Wasallam's command and imitate his actions in order that his pre-dawn meal will be an act of worship. Also, he should intend with his uh, sahur, his pre-dawn meal, to strengthen himself so that he will be able to observe uh, the, the fast. By doing this, he will be rewarded upon his intention. And according to the sunnah, the sahur or the pre-dawn meal should be delayed until the last portion of the night, except if one fears the rising of the dawn or, the, or, in term, or uh, obviously fajr entering in that regard. This is the action of the Prophet ﷺ. This is what the Prophet ﷺ used to do. It is narrated from Qatada uh, and from Anas ibn Malik, um, عنه, who said, the Prophet ﷺ and Zayd ibn Thabit ate the sahur, the pre-dawn meal together. And then the Prophet ﷺ stood and walked to the masjid and prayed. I.e. prayed Fajr. We said to him, what is the time period between him eating sahur and his prayer? He said, the period, the period of reciting 50 verses from the Qur'an. Collected by Bukhari, Al-Bukhari. Also, it was narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha. Um, that Bilal used to call the Adhan in the night and the Prophet Sallallahu would say to the people, eat and drink until you hear the Adhan of Ibn Ummi Makhtoum, i.e. Bilal radiallahu anhu, for verily he would not call the Adhan until the rising of the dawn, until Fajr entered. And that's collected by Al-Bukhari as well. So then the Shaykh continues and he says to us, he says, delaying the Sahur pre-dawn meal is is much easier upon the fasting person and safer for him to wake up on time for the dawn prayer. The fasting person can continue to eat and drink even after he has already eaten and intended to fast until he is certain that dawn has appeared or entered. This is due to the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 187. Um, if you look in the Arabic, it's quoted wrong there. In the Arabic, it says verse 183. Um, so um, it's verse 187, this ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah. Eat and drink until the white thread becomes distinct to you from the black thread of, of the dawn. And that's how you can tell um, uh, the true fajr from the false fajr because just an extra benefit, uh, uh, some of the brothers know as well that the false fajr is like a fox's tail. It's like a tail. It's like, uh, like that white outline in the air. However, the true fajr is when it's along the horizon, just like how Allah said here, eat and drink until the white thread becomes distinct to you from the black thread of, of, of dawn. And scholars explain this in more detail, which you can research yourselves uh, if you want to do that. And then uh, the shaykh continues and he says, so his certainty uh, must be based on seeing the rising of the sun in the horizon or by being informed by a trustworthy person, whether it is by the adhan or other than that. If the dawn rises, he should begin is fast with the intention in his heart without proclaiming it with his tongue. Because if you proclaim it verbally or with your tongue, if you say in your tongue your intention, well, that's bid'ah and it should be in your heart. So uh, this is an important point to note that you, uh, um, you know, announcing on your tongue, whatever it might be, even might be for prayer or anything, 
that uh, this uh, this pronunciation um for example even in the prayers as well um is is uh is bid'ah the only legislation is as far as i can remember correct me if i'm wrong brothers but as far as i can remember the only um a time you can actually make that uh, niya is when the people are going to hajj and they make the talbiya. That's the only legislated time and there's proof for that. But other than that, as far as I can remember, there isn't. So you have to be wary of that. Yeah. So um, then the sheikh, uh, so he continues. So we'll, we'll go through, we'll continue with where we left off with Arabic. So one second, let me go back over here. So then the sheikh, he said, he said, وَمِنْ أَعْدَابِ siyam." He said, وَمِنْ أَدَابِ سِيَامِ الْمُسْتَ الْمُسْتَحَبَّ تَأْجِيلُ الْفُتُورِ إِذَا تَحَقُّقُ غُرُوبَ الشَّمْسِ بِمُشَادَتِهَا أَوْ غَلَبَ عَلَى ذَنِّهِ الْغُرُوبَ بِخَبْرِ مُوثُوكٍ بِهِ بِأَذَانٍ أَوْ غَيْرِهِ فَعَنْ سَهْلِ بْنِ سَعْدِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ لَا يَزَالُ النَّاسُ بِخَيْرٍ مَا عَجَلُوا الْفِتْرَ مُتَفَقٌّ عَلَيْهِ وَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فِيمَا يَرْوِيهِ عَنْ رَبِّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ إن أحب إن إن أحب إبادي إلي أعجلهم فطرة رواه أحمد وترمذي وسن وسنتي وسنة أن يفطر أو وسنة أن يفطر على رتب فإن عدم فتمر فإن عدم فماء لقول أنس رضي الله عنه كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يفطر قبل أن يصلي على رتبات فإن لم تكن رتبات فتمرات فإن لم تكن تمرات حسى حسوات مما رواه أحمد وأبو داود وترمذي فإن لم يجدوا رتبا ولا تمر ولا ما أفطر أفطر على ما تيسر من طعام أو شراب حلال فإن لم يجد فإن لم يجد شيئا نوى الإفطار بقلبه ولا ولا يمس إصبعه أو يجمع ريقه ويبلعه كما يفعل ببعض العوام. So uh, let's just stop there at the end of that paragraph. So then the Sheikh says, like some recommendations of, of these uh, recommended etiquettes, or the what the recommendations of fasting, and the fa- etiquettes of fasting are that is hastening. Hastening to break the fast when it is confirmed that the sun has set by way of visual confirmation or by being informed by a trustworthy individual through the adhan or other than that. It is narrated by Sahal bin Sa'ad radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu said the people will continue to be upon good as long as they hasten to break their fast. Yeah. Likewise, the Prophet sallallahu said from what he has narrated from his Lord. And this is a, a hadith al-Qudusi now, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the most beloved of my slaves to me is the one who is the quickest to break his fast. Yep. So you find some people where they're looking at the timetable and they're like, oh, there's still two minutes left and one minute and this and the other. And um, they, they, they take forever breaking their fast and they're not hastening their, uh, their fast and they're going against the sunnah because of this. And uh, uh, a lot of us can uh, testify to that uh, Either ourselves doing this from time to time Or our family members falling into this issue So then um, The Shaykh continues and he says According to the Sunnah One should break his fast with wet dates Rutab, wet dates If there are none, then with dry dates at Tamar. And if not, then with water Due to Anas radiallahu an, uh, anhu's statement uh, Where he said uh, The people used to break uh, the, uh, sorry, the Prophet Sallallahu used to break his fast with wet dates before he prayed. If there were no wet dates, he broke his fast with dry dates. And if there weren't any dry dates, he would break his fast with sips of water or swallowing some water. Collected by Ahmad Abu uh, Ahmad Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and Al Albani, Rahmullah graded it to be Hassan Sahih in his book called Sahih Abi Dawood. And uh, so then the Sheikh says, if the fasting person does not find wet days, dry days or water, then he should break his fast with whatever he has of food and drink as long as it is lawful. So if there is nothing with which to break one's fast, a fasting person should intend to break his fast within his heart without sucking his finger or swallowing his saliva as some common folk do. 
So let's continue reading where we left off. So then the Sheikh he says, "Wa yambari an yadu wa in the fitri he bima ahabba." ففي سنن ابن ماجة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال إن لصائمي إن فطره دعوة ما ترد قال في الزوائد إسناده صحيح وروى أبو داود عن معاذ بن زهرة مرسلا مرفوعا كان إذا أفطر كان إذا أفطر يقول اللهم لك صمت وعلى رزقك أفطرت وله من حديث ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان إذا أفطر يقول ذهب الظمأ وابتلت الأروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله. So let's stop there at that paragraph. So let me just go back up here. Okay. So then uh, the sheikh uh, continues and he mentions some uh, so, some prayers. Uh, supplications that that that, are, uh, that we are well aware of, Alhamdulillah. So he mentions uh, that uh, he should invoke Allah before breaking his fast, asking Allah what he wants. Uh, it is mentioned in the Sunan of Ibn Majah that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The fasting person has an has a, has a uh, if a fasting person um, makes uh, makes a supplication, then it is not, you know, it's not." Uh, well, that's what it's answered. Uh, and, and a better way of saying that is the fasting person has an answerable invocation at the time he breaks his fast. So it's 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 a brilliant time. It's 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 an important time of uh, making uh, and you know uh, making du'a and supplication. And then um, Abu Dawood also narrated from Muad bin Zahra that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say when he broke his fast, he used to say, "Oh Allah, my fasting is for your sake." And with your uh, with your sustenance, I break my fast. Uh, the Sheikh uh, al-Albani graded uh, this hadith to be uh, weak uh, in 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 one of his books. He also mentioned the narration of Ibn Umar radiAllahu anhu uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to say upon breaking his fast, "The thirst has vanished, the veins have been moistened, and the reward has been confirmed or affirmed." Insha Allah. And this uh, 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 dua or supplication has been graded uh, Hassan by Al Albani in Sahih Abi Dawood. Uh, this is the one of the more well known uh, supplications, the one we just read. Zabah al Zama'u wa Abtallat al Uruku wa Thabat al Ajru, insha'Allah. So let's continue reading, insha'Allah. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, Wa min adab siyami al Mustahabba. كثرة القراءة والذكر والدعاء والصلاة والصدقة وفي سهيح ابن خزيمة وابن حبان أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ثلاثة لا لا ترد دعوتهم أصائم حتى يفتر والإمام العادل ودعوة المظلوم يرفعها الله فوق الغمام وتفتح لها أبواب السماء ويقول الرب وعزتي ويقول الرب وعزتي وجلالي لا أنصرنك ولو بعد حين ولو بعد حين رواه أحمد وترمذي وفي الصحيحين من حديث ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس وكان أجود ما يكون في رمضان هنا يلقاه جبريل فيدارسه القرآن فلرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حين يلقاه جبريل أجود بالخير من الريح المرسلة وكان جوده صلى الله عليه وسلم يجمع أنواع الجود الجود كلها كلها من بذل العلم و و و النفس والمال والمال لله عز وجل في إظهار دينه وهداية وهداية إبادي وإيصالي وإيصال النفع إليهم بكل طريق من تعليم جاهلهم وقضاء حوائجهم وإتعام جائعهم وكان جوده يتضاعف في رمضان لشرف وقته 
ومضاعفة أجره وأيانة العابدين فيه على عبادتهم والجمع, والجمع, والجمع بين الصيام وإتعام التعامي وهما من أسباب دخول الجنة So then the Sheikh uh, said, he says, he continues and he says, and from among the recommended etiquettes of fasting are increasing in the recitation of the Quran, glorification of Allah and supplications and praying to him, as well as giving charity as well. And it is mentioned in Sahih ibn Khuzayma and Sahih ibn Hibban that the Prophet wasallam said, there are three types of indi- individuals whose invocations will not be rejected. The fasting person until he makes his fast, a just ruler and the invocation of the oppressed one. Allah will raise it above the cloud and the doors of, and, and the, doors of the heavens will be opened for it. And the Lord will say, by my might and my greatness, I will assist you even if, it's, even if it is after some period of time. Collected by Ahmad and At-Tirmidhi, graded with al Bani in his book called Asilsila Adhaifa. And in Sahih al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was the most generous one of us, for he was more generous in the month of Ramadan when Jibreel would meet him, meet with him, and would, stu- uh, would study and teach him the Quran. Verily, the Prophet sallallahu gave more than the gentle breeze at the time when Jibreel would come and study the Quran with him. Collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. And then the Shaykh continues and he, say, he said here that this is because the Prophet's generosity was all-inclusive, combining all kinds of good, including sacrificing his knowledge, his soul, and himself, and, and his wealth for the sake of Allah in supporting uh, his religion and guiding his slaves and benefiting them by all means necessary, including teaching the ignorant ones, fulfilling their needs and feeding the hungry ones. His philanthropy or his, or his charitableness or his philanthropy increased in the month of Ramadan because of the nobility of the time period i.e. Ramadan and the multiplicity or because of the multitude uh, of rewards available. Likewise, he helped the worshippers in their acts of worship. Combining between fasting and feeding is one of the means of entering paradise. So let's uh, let's continue uh, where we left off. So then the Sheikh he says, "Wa fi sahihi Muslim an Abi." عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من أسبه منكم اليوم صائما فقال أبو بكر أنا قال فمن تبع منكم اليوم جنازة قال أبو بكر أنا قال فمن أتعم منكم اليوم مسكينا قال أبو بكر أنا قال فمن عاد منكم اليوم مريضا قال أبو بكر أنا قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما اجتمعنا في في امرئ الا دخل الجنه so let's just read this and then I'll carry on because uh, uh, because it's quite important so then the sheikh mentions it is mentioned in sahih muslim from the narrations of abu huraira radiyallahu uh, anhu that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, said um, who amongst you is fasting today then abu bakr said i and then the prophet said who amongst you followed a funeral today? And Abu Bakr replied, I did. Then he said, Who amongst you fed the poor today? And Abu Bakr replied, I did. And he said, Who amongst you visited the sick today? And Abu Bakr replied, I did. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, No man will have all these qualities in him except that he will enter paradise. Created by Muslim. So with all those qualities there, with Abu Bakr radiallahu answered yes to, that he did. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever, you know, if these are the qualities of a person, that he will that he will enter Jannah. So uh, let's continue um, where we left off here. Right. وَمِنْ أَدَابِ الصِّيَامِ الْمُسْتَحَبَّةِ أَنَّ أَنْ يَسْتَحْذِرَ أَنْ يَسْتَحْذِرَ الصَّائِمُ قَدْرَ نِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ قَدْرَ نِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ بِالصِّيَامِ حَيْثُ وَفَقَهُ لَهُ وَيَسَّرَهُ عَلَيْهِ حَتَّى أَتَمَّ يَوْمَهُ وَأَكْمَلَ شَهْرَهُ 
فإن كثير من الناس حرموا الصيام حرموا الصيام إما بموتهم قبل بلوغه أو بأجزهم عنه أو بذلالهم وإراضهم عن عن القيام به فليحمد الصائم الصائم ربه على نعمة الصيام التي هي سبب لمغفرة الذنوب وتكفير السيئات ورفعة الدرجات في دار النعيم بجوار الرب الكريم. So then um, the Sheikh says, he says so also from amongst the other uh, etiquettes, recommended etiquettes of fasting, is that the fasting person should recognize the bounty of fasting which Allah has legislated for him and bestowed upon him. And that is because Allah is the one uh, who granted him the success to fast and made it easy for him to complete his day and the month of fasting in general. There are many people who are deprived the opportunity to fast either because they died before the month arrived, i.e. the month of Ramadan, or because of their inability or misguidance or negligence of carrying out the responsibility of fasting during the month of Ramadan. Therefore, the fasting person should be grateful for Allah's blessing upon him by allowing him to fast, which is a cause for one's sins to be forgiven, or uh, would better word would be expi- expiation of sins, uh, and shortcomings expiated as well, and one's rank elevated in the abode of bounty next to the Lord of the bounties, uh, mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. So let's just carry on. Let's find the exact where we just finished off there. So then the Sheikh says, he says, Ikhwani. He says, Ikhwani says, Oh my brothers. He says, Oh my brothers. Ta'adabu bi adab siyami wa takhallu an asbab al ghadabi wal intiqami wa tahallu bi awsaf al salaf al kiram. Fa innahu lan yusliha akhir hadi al umma. إلا ما أصلها أولها من من الطاعة واجتناب الآثام. So then um, the Sheikh says, Oh my brothers, adhere to the etiquettes of fasting. Stay away from the causes of anger and revenge. Um, adorn yourselves with the qualities of the pious predecessors, the Salaf al-Salih. For verily, the later generations of this nation, the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Will not be successful except with what the former generation was successful upon and rectified from obedience and saying and staying away from sins. So uh, uh, we all know these brothers that the, at the end of the day, uh, the, a, a lot of people ask the questions. They say, uh, "The Muslim Ummah, why are they like this today? Why are you know why the kufar you know um, you know uh, you know able to control the Muslim Ummah and cause problems and they uh, you know overpowering them?" But that's because of our own sins. And the only way that will return, a lot of people ask this question, so this is the answer what the Sheikh has mentioned here. The answer is that when we turn back and look to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he came with and what his companions uh, uh, were upon and the Salaf al-Saleh, the three past generations, what they were upon and whoever follows them in goodness, then if we return to that, that's our success will come. Then Allah will give us success. So that's the solution anyway. So uh, uh, let's continue. So then um, the Sheikh mentions, he says, Qala ibn Rajabin, rahimahullah, asa'imuna ala tabakatayn, ihdahuma man taraka ta'amahu wa sharabahu wa shahwatahu lillah ta'ala, yarju indahu iwada thalika fil jannati. فهذا قد تاجر مع الله وعمله والله لا لا يضيع أجر من أحسن عمله ولا ولا يخيب معه من عمله بل يربح أعظم الربح قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لرجل إنك لن تدع شيئا اتقاء الله إلا أتاك الله خيرا منه أخرجه الإمام أحمد so we'll just stop there for a second and just uh, translate that. Uh, Ibn Rajab al-Hambali, uh, um, rahmahullah, may, and may Allah have mercy upon him, said, those who fast are of two levels. He says the first level or first group, those who refrain, uh, refrain from eating, drinking, and following one's desires for the sake of Allah, 
hoping for a return of that with paradise. Uh, uh, and these individuals have indeed bartered with Allah, or they've, you know, they've they've had a good trade, a good trade with Allah, and Allah will not let the deeds of the sincere people go to waste. Rather, He will allow them to benefit with a great benefit and reward them accordingly. And the Prophet Sallallahu said to a man, he said, you will not leave anything out of fear of Allah except that Allah will replace it with what is better. And that's collected by Ahmad uh, and Muqbil graded, uh, Sheikh Muqbil graded it to be uh, authentic in Asahih al-Musnad. So, um, we'll carry on from where we left off here. Just give me a second, let me just get to the paragraph. So then the Sheikh said, we've almost finished now, last page. Inshallah. Um, so then the Sheikh said, "Fahada sa'imu yu'ta fil jannati ma sha'a min ta'amin wa sharabin wa nisa'in." قال الله تعالى: "Kulu wa shrabu hani'an bima aslaftum fil ayyam al khaliya." قال مجاهد وغيره نزلت في الصائمين وفي حديث عبد الرحمن ابن سمرة الذي رآه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. في منامه قال ورأيت رجلا من أمتي يلحث عطشا كل ما دنا من حوض منئ وطرد فجاءه صيام رمضان فسقاه وأرواه أخرجه أو أخرجه التبراني. So I'll just read that paragraph. إن شاء الله. Translate that paragraph. The fasting person will receive in paradise. What he desires of food, drink, and women, Allah said, It will be said to him, Eat and drink joyfully because of the good deeds you did in the days that have gone by and the days in the past, what, what happened in the past. So, um, and that's from Surah Al Haqqa, verse 24, for whoever wants to look back at that. And then Mujahid and others from the scholars of Tafsir, so these are the scholars of Tafsir, said this verse is referring to those who fast. And then the Shaykh says, likewise, the one who the Prophet ﷺ saw in his dream in the hadith of Abdul Rahman ibn Samurai, he said, And I saw a man from my ummah panting like a dog out of thirst whenever he, he approaches the Hawd, i.e. the Prophet's fountain in the hereafter, to drink from it, he will be denied and pushed away from it. And his fasting in the month of Ramadan came and gave him a drink, so he drank until he quenched his thirst. Collected by at tabarani uh, And uh, it says here, uh, Sheikh al Uthameen graded its chain to be weak in his collection of fatawa. So then um, the Sheikh continues. We've almost finished now, so uh, we're nearly there. Just bear with me. Then the Sheikh says, Ya, ya qawmu, ya qawm, Allah khatibun, Allah khatibun fi hadha shahri ila rahman, Allah raghibun fi ma aadda Allahu litaayina fi al janan. <clears throat> then he quotes, he just, I'll, I'll keep reading, but uh, there's uh, some uh, poetry here, so I'll continue, inshallah. <clears throat> then uh, the Sheikh, he mentions some poetry, lines of poetry from Lataif uh, al Marif, I think. I'll just double check, yeah. From uh, Lataif al Marif is, uh, by, uh, is a book by authored by uh, Ibn Rajab al Hambali as well. So he says, Man yuridil mulka al jinani fal yada anhu tiwani. وَلْيَقُمْ فِي ذُلْمَةِ اللَّيْلِ إِلَى نُورِ الْقُرْآنِ وَلْيَسِلْ سَوْمًا بِسَوْمٍ إِنْ هَذَا الْعَيْشَ فَانِ إِنَّمَا الْعَيْشُ جِوَارُ اللَّهِ فِي دَارِ الْأَمَانِ And then the Sheikh continues, he says, أَتَبَقُ تُثَانِيَ Okay, so he just mentions the second group, so we'll just stop there and I'll translate where we left because we don't get confused, inshallah. <laughs> So then the Sheikh says, Oh my people, is there anyone who wants to address the most merciful in this blessed month? Is there anyone who desires what Allah prepared for the obedient slaves in paradise? And then he quotes uh, um, of a rough translation of, of this um, um, uh, few lines of poetry. Whoever wants the kingdom of, of paradise, then he should abstain from laziness and let him rise up in the darkness of the night to the, uh, to the illumination of the Quran and let him continue to follow Fasting with another, verily this life is a perishing life and it will end. And the real life is the one next to Allah, besides Allah in the abode of peace, i.e. paradise, Jannah. Yeah. So then um, 
uh, the Sheikh continues, and, and now, so, so that was to do with the first group of people, yes, yeah? so the second type now, the Sheikh says, At-tabaqatu thaniyatu min as-sa'imin, man yasumu fi dunya, amma siwa Allahu fayahfadu al-ra'sa wa ma hawa wal-batan, wa ma wa'a yadhkuru al-mawta wal-bila, wa yurid al-akhirata, fayatruku zinat al-dunya, فهذا عيد فطره يوم لقاء ربه فرحته برؤيته أو فرحته برؤيته من صام بأمر الله عن شهواته في الدنيا أدركها غدا في الجنة ومن صام عما سوى الله فعيده يوم, يوم لقائه من كان يرجو لقاء الله فإن فَإِنَّ عَجْلَ اللَّهِ لَآتِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ So I'll just translate that a bit and then there's just a final closing statement inshallah. So then um, the Shaykh mentions, so the second uh, type or group of, fasti, uh, of, of, of fasting people or types of fasting people are the one who in the worldly life abstains from everything other than Allah. He safeguards his head and what it contains, the belly and what it consumes. And he remembers death and the decaying of his body. And he chooses the hereafter over the luxury of the dunya of this world. Uh, for this individual, his feast of fitr or his Eid or his day of happiness is the day, he, is the day when he will meet his Lord. And, and he will be happy with seeing his Lord. And then the Sheikh says, and says the special group for fasting and, uh, and those. So he says the special group from the fasting ones are those who safeguard their tongue from slander and lying. And the people of knowledge and happiness are those whose fast is guarding the heart from falsehood and being blinded. Um, and then the Sheikh Kutuz says, he says, there's no castle that can cause the people of knowledge to forget about seeing their creator. And there is no river that can stand in their way, causing them to deliberate at the expense of seeing him. Rather, their concern is far greater than that. So, uh, and then the Sheikh says, so whoever abstains, um, he says, he says, Ya ma'asharan ta'ibin, sumu al yawma an shawat al hawa, itudriku eid al fitri yawm al liqa. So then Sheikh he says, Whoever abstains based on Allah's command from his desires in this world will surely obtain it in the hereafter in paradise. And whoever abstains from everything other than Allah, his feast will be the day he meets his Lord, the day he meets his Lord in the day of judgment. Yeah? So Allah said, then he just mentions, he says, Allahumma jammil bawatinina bil ikhlasi laka wa hassin amalina bil tiba'i rasulika wa ta'addub bi adabihi Allahumma ayqidna min al ghafalat wa najjina min al darakat wa kafiranna al dhunuba wa sayyat wa gfir lana wa li walidina wa li jimi al muslimin al ahyai minhum wal amwat wa bi rahmatika ya arham al rahimin وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. So then the Sheikh closes off with the dua, supplication as uh, as he does every lesson and every chapter. And he said, uh, but, but just before I mention that, there's a couple of ayahs that um, uh, that I didn't translate. Sorry. So uh, the ones I mentioned earlier, uh, um, where the Sheikh said, uh, whoever desires the meeting of Allah, then verily the appointed term of Allah will come, and He is the All Hearer, the All Knower. So, all, so then he, the Sheikh mentions and he uh, uh, says this supplication, which will translate. Give me a second. O oh Allah, beautify our uh, our affairs with sincerity and embellish our deeds by helping us to follow the guidance of your messenger. And he says, O oh Allah, allow us to adorn ourselves with the etiquettes of your messenger. Uh, o oh Allah, let us awake from our heedlessness and save us from uh, deterioration, destruction, expiate our sins and our shortcomings, forgive us and our parents and all of the Muslims, both uh, the ones who are living and the ones who have passed away. Um, for verily, you are the most merciful. Uh, may the peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his family members and all his companions. So inshallah, we finish there and uh, uh, Brother Wasim uh, will continue tomorrow. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh